Hey everyone, welcome back to Our World TV. Today we are discussing a tragic case that took place in late 2018 in Frederick, Colorado. The disappearance of the Watts family. We found this story to be rather sinister, and if you are not familiar with it, this is what happened. From the outside, the Watts family seemed perfect. On social media, Chris Watts plays the part of a loving husband and doting father to Bella Marie, aged four, and three-year-old Celeste, also known as Cece. I think Chris is going to lose it. He's so dizzy. You can tell he's slowing down. My daddy is a hero. Hey guys, we're here from the boat today. Wife Shanann is a social media maven, and just about every moment of Shanann's life streams live over Facebook. They seem to have the perfect life as it appears on social media. Have a great day. Chris and I are sitting here going out? waiting to board our flight to Miami. We're going to Toronto in June. Chris is a field coordinator at an oil company, and Shanann loved to share their love story, which started, not surprisingly, on Facebook from Chris on Facebook. Well, one thing led to another and he's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Say hi Cece. Hi Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> According to friends, Chris was a very loving hands-on dad and adored his family. And then, just last June, another baby was on its way. Shanann announced her pregnancy on Facebook and, and to their delight, they were having a boy. Chris wants a boy. I hope it's a boy for him. It'll make him happy. Means that's just the test. I know. It just says the pink is gonna be girls. I don't know. Just the test. That's awesome. Shanann works for a multi-level marketing company selling vitamin-infused patches. Fifteen-week pregnant Shanann went on a business trip to Arizona for her company, accompanied by her best friend and colleague Nicole Atkinson while Chris remained at their family home in Colorado with their two daughters. Friend Nicole dropped Shanann home after their business trip in the early hours of the morning of August 13th around 1.45 a.m. giving her a hug and telling her that she would see her in the morning. That morning, Shanann Watts goes offline. According to Nicole, she did not text her or respond to texts which was unusual as Shanann texted her every morning. Nicole later decided to go to Shanann's house and knows the code to the front door, but she could not get in as the house appeared to be locked from the inside. Nicole then called Chris and asked where Shanann was, and Chris told her that she had gone on a play date, but Nicole thought that to be odd as Shanann's car was still in the garage, with both Bella and Cece's car seats inside. Nicole became concerned and called the police. I'm calling because I'm concerned about um, a friend of mine. She's not answering the door, she's not responding to text messages, phone calls, and there's no movement in the house whatsoever. As Nicole was waiting for the cops, Shanann's husband, Chris Watts, who was at work, called Shanann's other friend, Cassie Rosenberg, to see what was going on. Cassie said that she became frantic and told Chris to get to the house and that Nicole was calling the police so that they could break down the door and, and Chris said no, don't call the police, don't want to get them involved. Frederick police officer Scott Coonrod races to the house. How you guys doing? Hi. Nicole? Yes. This is real-time footage captured on his body camera. Inside, make yourself known. Police department, if anyone's inside, make yourself known. After a quick check on the house, Chris yeah, Watts anyway. finally shows up. So, this is the only vehicle she would have? Only one that she would drive? Okay. Mind if I come in, Chris? You mind if I look around? Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Thank you. 
Officer Coonrod then asks to search the house. They search the house and the only signs of life was their barking dog. Chris tells police that he saw his wife early that morning before he left for work. The house appears neat and orderly, nothing out of place or rummaged through. Shanann's purse and wallet was left on the counter, her wedding ring on the nightstand, and unmade beds. Oh, that was an honor? No, no, this was honor. There was also a sheet missing off the bed in the master bedroom, and the matching sheet, the non-fitted sheet, was found in the garbage can. Eventually, they find her cell phone, which she always had on her. Oh, from home? George, this is your lifeline. Can your kids take any medication? CC takes, Singular, and Reprisol. And the biggest clue of all, in the kitchen, they found the medicine for CC and an EpiPen that she would always carry with her. Police get a break in the form of the Watts neighbor, Nate, who has a security camera on the front of his house that has video surveillance. Chris then goes with police to the neighbor's house to watch video that Nate's camera caught on that fatal morning. Chris appeared very nervous and frantic while the video was played out. Chris is seen backing his truck up into his garage and took about 50 minutes to load his work truck. Detective just showed up. You just want to go talk to him. I'm going to get his info real quick. No. Seemingly desperate to find his family, Watts turned to the media for help. And Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just, just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. I need to see everybody. In that interview, Chris admits that he and Shanann had exchanged words before she went missing. It wasn't, it wasn't like an argument. We had an emotional conversation, but I'll leave it at that. In the weeks before Shanann went missing, she expressed great concern that her marriage to Chris was falling apart, sending Chris text messages like this. She had told friends that Chris said he was not happy anymore and she did not know what was wrong. Shanann texted another friend that Chris said he was scared to death about the new baby and did not want it and was only happy with the two girls Bella and Celeste and that he had changed and did not know who he was anymore. Shanann did suspect that Chris was possibly having an affair and an alert to their credit card charged for an expensive meal at a sports bar raised her suspicions and it turns out she was right. Chris was having an affair with a woman from work, Nicole Kissinger. Chris had told Nicole that he was separated and working on getting a divorce. All of these photos, including nude pictures of Nicole, would end up on a secret app camouflaged as a calculator in Chris's phone. Nicole found out that Chris's wife is not only missing, but 15 weeks pregnant. This is bizarre, but apparently Chris and Nicole had started their affair around June 2018, and Nicole said she had no idea he was married. But according to her online searches, in September 2017, she had searched Shanann Watts. This would suggest that her interest in Chris had formed months before they officially started their affair. And due to Shanann's social media presence, she would have known that they were in fact married and that Shanann and Chris had two children and they were expecting another baby. Nicole had also done searches on Google for wedding dresses and such suggesting she was indeed quite heavily involved with Chris Watts. Nicole Kissinger herself contacted authorities voluntarily in order to disclose all she knew about Chris and the ongoing investigation. Finger. 
didn't even mention his kids right away either. And then one day he told me that he had two kids. I thought it was kind of cute. I was like, oh, he's a dad. We got along really well. I thought what we had, it was very comfortable for me. I enjoyed it. I think he did very much as well. I just realized that he was lying to me and I was like, well, if you can lie to me about this, what else are you lying to me about? Shanann's parents, Sandra and Frank Ruzek, were very vocal in voicing their concerns about the disappearance of their pregnant daughter and granddaughters, and had believed that their son-in-law Chris had something to do with it. Vanished. Like, she's not, like, when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like, she wasn't here. Kids weren't here. I have no idea, like, where they went. And it doesn't, it's just earth shattering. I don't feel like this is even real right now. It's like a nightmare that I just can't wake up from. Following the interview, the FBI informed Chris Watts that he would need to be included as a suspect in the case of his missing wife and daughters. The special agent conducting the interview reported that Chris was providing statements that were not completely truthful and asked him to do a polygraph test the following day, and Chris agreed. ready to do that and when people hold stuff inside it makes you physically ill and I can just tell on your face I could tell you tell from the second you walked in that you were wanting to just come clean and just be done with this and I appreciate that because you knew sitting down in that chair that you weren't going to pass today and you knew I was going to find out because I told you that and then you continued to stay knowing that you could at the end say you know what I just need to get this off my chest. Like, I just need to tell you what happened. We're not, we're not here to play games. We're not here to do any of that with you. We just want to know what happened. The issue right now is what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. That's the issue right now. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about that. After failing the polygraph test, investigators pressed him on the results for being deceptive and advised him to tell the truth but he continued to deny his involvement in the disappearance of his family. Simultaneously, while the interview was being conducted, authorities had arrived at site Survey 319 after following the GPS data retrieved from Chris's work truck and completed a drone search of the site. During the search, investigators had discovered a bed sheet in the field and the sheets matched the bedding that had been recovered in the kitchen garbage can in the Watts family home. As the interview intensified and investigators pressed Chris further on the whereabouts of Shanann, Bella and Celeste, Chris continued to deny any knowledge on his missing family but revealed that he had been lying about his extramarital affairs. Investigators told Chris that they did not think his girlfriend had hurt anyone and that to leave her out of it and get back to focusing on his missing pregnant wife and daughters. Chris, we can keep talking to you once we find these girls, okay? So once we find these girls and your wife, right, no matter how we find them, no matter what condition they're in, we can keep talking to you and you can tell us, guys, it's not as bad as it looks. And you can say, let me tell you, what happened? I was never comfortable with you, Graham, or with you, Tam. No, I wasn't comfortable yet, but now that everything's known, now that these girls are found and Shanann's found, however they're found, it's okay. We can keep talking to you. Chris continued to deny knowing anything about the disappearance, and the affair was all that he was hiding. Reminding Chris he was not questioned about infidelity, and they had already had information on his girlfriend, Nikki, they were concerned about his missing wife and family. After six hours of interrogation, Chris began to buckle and subsequently confessed to murdering and disposing of his wife and two children. You told your boss, like, yeah. hey, I'm going to separation, I'm maybe staying yeah. at a friend's house, whatever. You know that thing pings every 10 seconds? Yep. Yeah. So we will know you exactly where you went. And your company's giving that to us. I know. Took them out of the house with their blankets and their animals. 
Did you? I did not do anything. All three of them? I did not do anything. Can I have talking about that or something? Absolutely. Do you want to bring him in here? No, uh, I just can't talk to my dad. I flew across the country. I can't. How about this? If we brought your dad in here, would you please tell him what happened? However much time you need, okay? Sure. Watts asked to speak to his father, Ronnie Watts, before making the confession. Don't stand up for me. But I'm going to have you face that wall. Over there. Just face it. Lift up your hands. Hey, you want to face me? Christopher Lee Watts was taken into custody and held in jail for the murder of his wife and two young daughters. Okay, turn around face me. No earrings, necklaces, anything like that. The body of Watts's family were located by the authorities on the property of Watts' now former employer on August 16th. Watts had been fired from his job on August 15th, the day of his arrest. The autopsy revealed that the cause of death for both four-year-old Bella Marie and three-year-old Celeste Catherine Watts was asphyxiation due to smothering. Four-year-old Bella showed signs that she had fought for her life with bruised gums, a torn inner lip, and having bit down on her tongue several times during the fatal attack. Their small bodies were discovered in the oil tanks, dressed in their pajamas. Fifteen-week pregnant Shanann Catherine Watts had died due to manual strangulation and was buried in a shallow grave nearby. Following the murders of Bella, Shanann, and Celeste at the hands of Nicole Kissinger's lover, Chris Watts, Nicole did several web searches on Amanda Frey, the mistress of Scott Peterson, who murdered his pregnant wife. Her searches included Frey's book deal, her net worth, and if people hated the mistress Amanda Frey. And who knows? Possibly Nicole will share her side of the story someday. The story of Frederick Mann is accused of killing his wife and two children, all the while appearing to be a worried husband. What we don't know is why. This new mugshot, Christopher Watts, looks nothing like the figure seen in family photos. Gone is the smile he showed next to his wife and daughters, or even in the interview he gave Denver 7 a day before his arrest. Our prosecutors just confirmed what many have long suspected, that this pregnant mom and her two little girls were killed inside the family's home in Frederick. Investigators with the FBI, CBI, and Frederick police had been working around the clock since Monday to find pregnant Shanann Watts and her two little girls, Cece and Bella. But everything changed late Wednesday night. Chris Watts was taken into custody and was transported to the Well County Jail just after 11.30 p.m. last night. Sources tell Denver 7 Shanann's husband Chris confessed to killing his own family and then hiding their bodies just 24 hours after he went in front of our cameras. Just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. The Watts appeared to be a happy family, and even if they weren't, no one expected this. On August 21st, Watts was charged with five counts of first-degree murder, including one count per child cited as death of a child who had not yet attended 12 years of age and the defendant was in a position of trust, unlawful termination of a pregnancy, and three counts of tampering with the deceased human body. The DA revealed gruesome new details about the murders. As Watts strangled his wife, it would have taken up to four minutes to end her life. Then he smothered his two daughters. Four-year-old Bella fought back as her dad was killing her. Even more shocking, just hours after burying his wife and dumping his daughter's bodies in oil tanks, he was back with his co-workers, acting as if nothing had happened. Words that come to mind when I hear 
the evidence in this case are a senseless crime and the viciousness of the crime and equally aggravating in this court's determination is the despicable act of disposing of the bodies in the manner in which they were done in this perhaps case. the most uh, inhumane and vicious crime that I have handled out of the thousands of cases that I have seen and nothing less than a maximum sentence um, would be appropriate and anything less than the maximum sentence would depreciate the seriousness of this offense. So the court is going to sentence Mr. Watts as follows. With regard to count number one, murder in the first degree as it relates to Shanann Watts, the court is gonna sentence you, sir, to uh, a life sentence in the Colorado Department of Corrections, followed, um, excuse me, with no possibility of parole. With regard to count two, as it relates to murder in the first degree, with Bella, the court is going to sentence you to life in the Colorado Department of Corrections with no possibility of parole. With regard to count number three, the court is going to sentence you as it relates to Celeste to life in the Colorado Department of Corrections with no possibility of parole. With regard to counts four and five relating to Bella and Celeste as a different theory of first degree murder, the court is gonna sentence you to life in the Colorado Department of Corrections and legally those sentences must run concurrently as a different theory of first degree murder. In summary, Chris Watts turned out to be a monster. This is a heartbreaking story of a Colorado family, a senseless murder. No one knows Chris Watts motives. If he was tired of his married life and perhaps wanted a clean break and instead of filing for divorce, annihilated his family. Either way, this sad situation is really twisted and I'm sure more information will come out, if any at all. It is sinister and we assume there is more to the story. What do you think? Please do leave your comments in the comment section below and share your thoughts on this sad case. Our hearts and prayers go out to the grieving families and may the victims in this hateful, senseless crime rest in peace. God bless. Monster, you have no heart or feelings or love. Prison is too good for you. This, this is hard to say, but may God have mercy on your soul. We loved you like a son. We trusted you. Your faithful wife trusted you. Your children adored you. This is something we will never get over. We will always mourn the loss of our family. I am still struggling to understand how and why this tragedy occurred. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to leave your comments in the comments section below and connect with us. We'd really love to hear from you. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification right next to the subscribe button so that you guys can get notified as soon as we upload a video. If you guys know of any other story that might be relevant or that you'd like us to do a little investigation on and do a little video like this, please let us know in the comments section below and we'll get right on it. See you guys soon. Much love from our world to yours.